Hello, this is Keith Slough from Ambassador Christian College. I'm also the Chairman and the President of Christian Fellowship Ministries of the Church of God. And I've got a set of videos here, a number of videos there, they're only 10 minute videos that are directed toward the members, the former members of the Worldwide Church of God. And I've got some things I want to share with you. People have wondered what happened to the church over the years when it went down and diminished and today it doesn't even exist anymore. At one time it was the world's fastest growing church. I saw that in an article in Christianity Today way back about oh, 1972. Uh, but these very short 10 minute videos will help you to understand what happened to that church because I've been around for a long time. I began listening to the World Tomorrow radio program back in 1967, so I'm not a, a newbie. I, I know a lot about the church. I went to the college uh, in Big Sandy, Texas, and then I finished up in Pasadena, California, graduated and was graduated as a ministerial candidate, what they used to call ministerial trainees. And I've been ordained now going on almost four decades as I'm doing this video. So I would like to share with you what did happen and something that a lot of people don't understand, what really did happen to that church. It wasn't, some people thought, well, maybe because they didn't have the right calendar. Some people thought maybe it was because they had the wrong day for Pentecost or whatever and all this stuff. But there's one thing they haven't come up with, and there is the reason why that church diminished. And I want to tell you about that. I want to tell you and explain it to you so that you'll fully and com completely understand it. I've got some notes here I want to share. <clears throat> the the members of this church, the Worldwide Church of God, have wondered for a number of years what happened. How did it go down? How did a church that was growing so fast just take off and go down and become nothing? Back in the 60s, it was growing at 30% a year until right at the very end when the leader of that church in Pasadena decided to secularize the work, as he called it, the work of God. And when he began to secularize it around, it started happening about 68 the announcement, I think, was made in 67. We saw obvious signs of it in 68. By 69, uh, the, the World Tomorrow radio program was almost entirely secular in a documentary, and, the, and they were just getting on television at that time, and it was a documentary. And as the church got farther and farther and farther away from the Bible, guess what happened? The income began to dry up, and eventually, well, it, it came to nothing over the years. <clears throat> In the 1970s, a bit, the membership began to spiral down the 80s and, of course, in the mid-90s when with new uh, leadership, and you see what happened. Now, I can remember when I graduated from the campus there in Pasadena, California in 1978. I graduated with magna cum laude, taking all these Bible courses, went into the ministry eventually. But I remember a tape. I came back here to the Charlotte, North Carolina congregation where I was baptized. Uh, in the early to mid-70s. And I remember a taped sermon that the leader of the church there, and I'm not mentioning his name, I'm trying to be nice. Some of you have been told about these videos, by the time you see this first video, some of you have been told, don't listen to Keith Slough, he's a heretic. Don't listen to those videos. Well, for those of you who live in the United States, this is still America, and you got the right to listen to anybody you want to listen to. Now, what have you got to be afraid of? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and verse 21, prove all things. So let's do that. Let's prove what the truth is. And I want you to understand, there is one very important reason why that church failed. One significant thing that happened that probably you don't know and haven't been told. So I'm going to share with that information with you. Now, <clears throat> I started to tell you about a tape. I heard a tape sermon from the leader of the church in Pasadena. He was very proud of that sermon. He wanted to go to all the churches. And I remember him saying in that tape sermon, he said, Brethren, I used to say the church grew at 30% a year. And it did, on average. He said, but I don't say that anymore. He said, this year we have less members than we had last year. I'm sitting there in the church uh, on the Sabbath listening to the sermon. I thought, yeah, that's interesting. He said, in last year, we had less members than we had the year before. He said, brethren, it's going down. That church was in a mess at that time. What happened? What caused that to happen? Now, <clears throat> it appears to many former members that the church was under some type of a divine curse. Not just a curse, but a divine curse. In Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28, the Bible says if we displease God, God will scatter us. What has happened to the church? 
What has happened to it? Curses include sickness, disease, stress, distress. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, starting in, in verse 1, if you obey God, all these blessings will come on you. You'll be blessed in the field, blessed in the city, blessed when you come in, blessed when you go out. Now start in verse 15, where it says, if you disobey God, there was a lot of sin, higher ups and the higher echelons of that church, not to mention the specific one thing that that church did wrong that caused it to diminish. And I'll get into that very, very soon. But curses come in, in uh, sickness and disease comes in all different shapes and forms. But what is the ultimate curse, by the way? What is the ultimate curse? So you can get sick and you go to the doctor and you get out of the hospital and you're alive and well today. But the ultimate curse is death. And in verse 15 it says, if you disobey God, Deuteronomy 28, verse 15, here's what's going to happen. You'll be cursed in the city, cursed in the field. You'll be cursed when you come in. You'll be cursed when you go out. The exact opposite. And it goes all the way down to 68 verses. And it talks about all the horrible curses like the botch of Egypt. Whatever that is, it sounds terrible. But eventually you'll die. And he talks about, God talks about scattering both in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. It says we will be scattered. Now the ultimate penalty of sin, Romans 6.23, is death. And that's what can happen to a person who denies Jesus Christ or it can happen to a person uh, who, um, or if a person eventually comes to Christ. We know he can be saved at any point in time because God's mercy endures forever. But it can happen not only to a person, but to a church. And if that church does not repent, it will die. That can happen. By the mid to late 1990s, people were leaving the Worldwide Church of God by the tens of thousands. And today, only about 13 to 14 percent have formed split-off groups, splinter groups from the from the Worldwide Church of God. Everything from the uh, United Church of God to um, Church of God International. There was one called the Global Church of God, or uh, the Church, the, the Intercontinental Church of God. Gerald Flurry, David Pack started uh, a couple of groups, splinter groups that that elevate the leader of that church. Uh, before he died, and they're still exalting him, and so and those are the two that uh, exalt him more than the other group that I've found so far. And according to some, now I haven't counted all the various splinter groups, but according to, I believe it was the newspaper called The Journal, put out by Dixon Cartwright, there's something like 300 different splinter groups that have come out of that church. Most of them still keeping the Sabbath and Holy Days, but they're very small now. But that represents, those 300 different groups represent 13 to 14 percent of the entire church. The main body that was left holding the bag in Pasadena after all these tens of thousands left, they eventually sold uh, both campuses. They already sold one in England, but they still had one in Texas, had one in Pasadena. They sold both campuses gave up that beautiful administration building, which I've been in I don't know how many times, that gorgeous, beautiful concert hall, which uh, sometimes w was called the House of God. And I've been in there so many times, go in there on a Friday night and look up at those beautiful columns and the gold and everything. That was real gold. That, that was actual gold they had up there. It was an amazing building. And the carpet on the inside, you could almost sink into it. It's so thick. And I mean, I've never been in a building like that. It's the most beautiful building I've probably ever been in. That's now owned by a Pentecostal tongues talking church. That entire campus was sold, and what was left, the group that was left, they moved to Glendora, California, rented a warehouse, and set up new headquarters in a warehouse. They decided to start a whole new church with a different name, different doctrines, and of course under different leadership. And their work is basically, I don't think they even have a TV show or radio ministry or anything. I think they're just simply keeping up with what, whatever tithes and offerings are still coming in. But as far as I know, they're not doing any kind of a really great work. And they are calling it a denomination now. It's a, a denomination ostensibly of the Protestant religion now. I think they're calling themselves Protestant. But it is not the Church of God any longer. So what did cause it to die? What actually did cause it to die? Well, what I have to share with you in these 10-minute videos may not only open your eyes to that question, but also show you what to many may be a new revelation. Now, I knew Ronald L. Dart personally. He was a top-ranking minister of the Church of God. Uh, I first heard him speak in 1971 at the Feast of Tabernacles. He gave a sermon when he talked about how that God is displeased with the people. And 
he, he was going into Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28 when he said that God is displeased with the people. When he is, he scatters them. What has happened to the worldwide church of God today? Now, this is mentioned in the following scriptures. Let me give it to you very quickly here. In the time I have left, I don't know how much time I've got left, but Leviticus 26, 33 talks about the scattering. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 64, I'll give you the references, and you can look them up. Deuteronomy 32, verse 26, mentions it. Oh, and I missed uh, Deuteronomy 30, verse 3, you'll be scattered. Uh, there's another one. Let me read this one. Deuteronomy 4, verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and you shall be left few in number. That is exactly what has happened to the worldwide church of God. Now, <clears throat> I think that's all the time I've got on this video. I want to ask you a question. What caused God to scatter the church? Mr. Dart did not specify, to the best of my recollection, what the, the real curse was. But there was a very specific thing that the church did or did not do that caused God to just scatter that church and I don't think they'll ever come back together. They, they are scattered, and even the split-offs are splitting off and getting smaller and smaller. So on the next video, these short, really quick, short 10-minute videos, and I hope you'll take the time to watch the next one, because I'm going to talk to you about the very thing that the church did wrong that caused that church to fall apart. It was under a divine curse. It actually was. And on the next 10-minute video, I'll tell you what that was. See you next time.